Pashmina's Mini Bike Diary Day 10 Waking feverishly at night, I assembled the mini bike according to the book. I now had a way to keep moving, a way to leave this godforsaken area and the undead that milled around like a long lost sheep, their minds and souls lost to the spreading virus that spread like wildfire across the land. The weather was warm and travelling the open roads was a blessing as the cool breeze rushed over me. In the distance I heard the faint sounds of an airplane engine overhead. The pilot flew over the planes, dropping a parachute in the distance. Curiosity tingled over me. With reckless abandon I decided to chase the container attached with the parachute. Over the bumpy terrain I sped, my eyes never leaving sight of the promised goods. Eagerly I opened the latches from the flame-ridden supply crate and retrieved a few meds, some vitamins and some broken down weapons. Not a bad haul, but the meds were welcome indeed. I rechecked my coordinates for the treasure map that I found, which bizarrely led me to this ramshackle graveyard in the middle of nowhere. Here I am still digging up the dearly departed in the dead of night, searching for Jennifer's elusive treasure, treasure she left behind. Though after frantically digging and rubbing the graves, I did not manage to find her bloody loot. Exhausted after digging all night, I slept peacefully in the crypt. Day 11. A beautiful sunny morning beckoned me to be on my way. Today I wanted to look for some supplies, namely some new tyres for my scooter. By chance I had run into a small service station and a rather large bank in the middle of nowhere with a reasonable sized group of zombies waiting for a juicy teller to eat. No tyres to be found though. I did find a brand new spare motor and another car battery which I'll use later to construct a mobile spotlight. Some of the colourful town denizens occupying this small patch of undecimated land a local boxer and once comely nurse, momentarily blinded from the miners' helmet light, bright light as they pose for selfies. This bear obviously hadn't read the article. Talk to the angry, ferocious bear calmly, not very sound advice. I aimed my faulty pistol and let bullet after bullet slam into his massive flesh. Eventually he went down and skimmed him well for his fur and yummy bear meat. I will feast tonight on boiled bear meat with cornbread. Day 12 Spent that evening crafting and upgrading my gear as best I could to prepare me for the onslaught of the weekly zombie horde. The blood moon will soon rise and it's terrifying ordeal to go through every seven days. I drove randomly over the plains thinking that this was a shortcut back to the main road and how wrong could I be? Before I knew it, me and the mini bike were airborne for a few seconds, then we came down to earth with a huge thud. Now this was just great. I was stuck at the bottom of the pit, which had a small mine entrance. Maybe a few ramps dug out a trench into the hillside to get the damn bike out of there, and free at last. My new home shelter for a day or two, which conveniently had a forge installed. I need to melt all my iron down as it is becoming cumbersome. Tomorrow I'll dig around for some clay and venture out for a bit. The forge tends to heap up, heat up the map and attract screamer zombies and mini hordes, so I won't be hanging there during the day. Day 13. It has been raining non-stop all day, though my load of the dust keeps me well insulated from the wet. Nearby to my overnight house, I came across a boarded up underground bunker, a perfect place to be safe tomorrow. During my beef sojourns, sojourns today, I came across an army camp as well. A brilliant idea occurred to me was to collect the littered mines strewn in the tall grass and cover the bunker backyard with them. Surely this will cool some of them topside while I hunkered down below. Though a few zombies did blow themselves up as they eagerly detonated the mines running towards me with arms open wide.
Day 14. Not much to do except hone my weapon skills and crafting. I parked the minibike in the temporary place nearby so as the zombies wouldn't damage it and the stash contained in it. I went down early that evening into the bunker with a few rations and meds, boarded myself in and waited for the horde to arrive at 2200 hours. The rain continued to pelt down and the thunderclaps only added to my anxiety. So there I was, waiting, waiting and waiting some more but nothing came. Relief flooded through me and I managed to catch a few hours of shut eye. Day 15 Life is so unpredictable when you expect to have a bad day and you get a trouble-free day instead like yesterday. One would have thought day 15 be a smooth outing. I travelled through various biomes as I randomly chose forked roads to ride. The heat had intensified as the day wore on. I rested briefly at a convenient chemist to replenish my mats and cool down in the shade. To my dismay, as I travelled further along, the road had disappeared out of nowhere into a void of toxic wasteland. Waste of fuel and time as I had to the, retrace the very way I came from. The sun hung low as I watched for a side road that would lead me to an abandoned house. Day 16. Hearing the now all too familiar sounds of the plane dropping supplies, I jumped on the bike recklessly, following the orange plume in the sky. Greedily, I took the contents from the supply crate and started to take a shortcut back to the road through the burnt forest. Well, that was a splendid idea. I ran over several burning embers and me and the bike were engulfed in a ball of fire. Hurriedly I got off. The pain was excruciating. I smeared the burn cream haphazardly and swallowed some painkillers to ease the burning sensation on my skin. Day 17. I hadn't noticed after riding here late last night that we were close to the snow biome. I was freezing all night long and slept huddled to the fire to keep my core temperature down. The following morning as I rode out in the snowstorm I had zero visibility. The landscape a pure white sheet in front of me. Killed the pigs and the deer along the way till I came to a small village. Strangely enough, there were zombies queued up at the Shamway, wandering around, lost in the aisles. Unfortunately, no food was left in the stock boxes in the back room. The local bookstore had a few gems that I hadn't read before. I pulled up at the police station and felt reasonably safe for the rest of the evening. Day 18. Feeling somewhat stronger and better skilled, I decided to head to the city. The city, once a bustling hive activity, was now a shadow of its former self. Bloated policemen roamed the streets with their canines seeking out the living. It was still too dangerous to consider living there. I saw a side road that led inland away from the city and I decided to see where it would take me. I couldn't believe my luck that it led to a small military outpost. There were no minefields to negotiate to enter the complex, which was a blessing in disguise. It was only three days to go before the blood moon, and this place offered me the best solution for defence. Concrete outer walls with two lookout towers seemed promising to withstand the horde. Day 19. Dylan I worked from sun up to sundown, strengthening walls, gathering resources, and laying down the wood spike defences. Blistered and bruised, I tore away, focused on one thing, the blood moon. From the distance, I heard a faint yapping. To my, dis to my dismay, I hadn't forgot about the dogs roaming wild just before the day seven-day horde. Running back to the base, the pack had gathered steam and were running me down. I swung my spike club wildly at them, hearing the crack on their skulls as they went down. Their death cries alerted more of their mates to me. 
by then I had safely made it back to the compound where they barked viciously behind the chain link fence at me. Day 20. I stand at the sandy banks of the lake behind the compound and capture the sounds of water lapping. Birds fly high in the sky as I replenish my water stock from the lake. I am exhausted from the work I had to undertake. There is not enough daylight hours left to complete my task. Sadly there is only one day left to go. The compound is not as secure as I had hoped. My vision was too large for me to undertake on my own. As I stare out to the sunset, the last rays of orange light descend slowly over the slopes and with it my heart sinks into the darkness. The crimson moon hangs high in the sky. The, the clock strikes 10 o'clock. The dog howls crescendo and the terrifying screams of the undead echo throughout the landscape. Their blood-curdling cries entice others to join the pack as they run blindly towards me. I am my hunting rifle and kill as many as I can. Pistols for the ones that clamber higher over the walls. I hear the concrete being crumbled by the acid of the bloated cops. The ferals merrily jumping on top of the weaker zombies. I'm attacked from behind as a screamer crawler lurches for me. I unload my pistol into him. There is too many. I don't have enough ammunition. I withdraw down the ladder into the somewhat new reinforced room. I slam the hatch down and close my eyes to the deafening roar outside. I've have, I hope I have done enough to survive the night. I hope they don't breach my defences. Day 22. I've been cooped up too long in the compound. Took a short drive into the city and stopped at the Sky Rise apartment blocks. I wanted to get a new garden project going, become more self-sufficient and grow a sustainable food source. The looting of the apartments was to get coffee, corn and potato seeds. I did reap other benefits as well on the loot mission. I got some rather hefty upgraded clothes in some aspects. Unfortunately, I only managed to scrounge a few coffee beans. cranked out the cement mixer today and started to make buckets upon buckets of concrete to repair the outer walls that were destroyed in last night's raid. If I wanted to upgrade the concrete walls more, most likely would have to do more mining. Day 23. Back to the city to get car parts, springs, leather, etc. Mostly the items I needed were for fittings for furniture. I wanted to make the compound have a home sweet home feel. I drove through a snow biome and to my surprise I found the supply crate that the plane left a few days ago. It is bitterly cold and I feel that I may get frostbite if I linger too long. Perhaps I should craft some warmer clothes for this particular type of environment. A beautiful jewel in the snow hidden from the outside world, the church enveloped in the powdery snow looked surreal as zombies walked around the exterior burial grounds. Day 24. A relaxing day as I refurbished and redecorated the buildings to my heart's content. Was it a waste of materials? I don't care. I simply enjoyed making my own creature comforts. I made a start to my garden with 12 coffee beans I had ransacked yesterday. I would have to look further afield for potatoes, blueberry and corn seeds for my garden. I left home sweet home after midday, packed a few essentials for life on the road for the next few days. Came across another church in a burnt zone. Each headstone was engraved with the words, rest in peace mad mole. How curious. Dusk was fast approaching. I took a side road about 8 p.m. that evening and found a deserted barn for my evening sleep. I stepped up on the loft with hay bales for my bedding. Day 25 Eager to leave the barn from last night, I rode carefree along the deserted highways. I thought how lucky was I to spy the massive 
sinkhole in the middle of the road. Carefully I rode alongside the road through long tall grass when all of a sudden I felt the earth give way under me. I'd fallen to a smaller sinkhole and now my precious scooter lay there at the bottom of the pit. Cursing myself, I dove further down into the water and started to assemble ramps to climb out of it. I could see the small underwater link linking tunnel to the much lighter water-filled pit. Finally soaked and weary, I got out of my dilemma. I stopped by some drugstore and looted a few more meds. Evening approached rapidly and I decided to stay overnight at a small western cowboy saloon type house. Day 26. I'm rather proud of my first harvest of coffee beans, though I will replant all that I have to fill the remainder beds. I took the mini bike out for a run and came across a pumping station. There were many hardware crates to be found scattered along the walkways. Only two zombies were trapped at the lower confines at the external portion of the building. Crossing the snow biome, I came across a small army outpost. Carefully traversed the snow that had snow-covered mines littered on the ground. It was not advised to loot the mines in these conditions. Day 27. Today I would venture by foot and not by a mini bike because I needed to map the area out and I knew that the lake was huge, that it perhaps had an even larger body of water to circumvent. Along a dusty road I found a cave that had some natural ores but not too many that I could see. I would need to explore it at a later date to mine the needed ores. I stopped by the city briefly to loot the two shotgun messiahs there. I found some excellent graded parts for my guns. Day 28. I spent hours crafting better clothes and gear. Later that day I rode back to the city and saw another plane drop, a supply crate from the sky. To my amusement I came across another airdrop that I hadn't saw a few days back. I heard the roar of the engines that day but I was high up in the complex apartment. It wouldn't be fast enough to chase the orange plume in the sky. Night came and the fear trickled down my spine, calling itself into tight knots. The all too familiar of the clock striking 10 p.m., the screams of bloodlust torturing the night air, the last few minutes of my life flashing postcard images of my life. How could anyone survive this alone? I no longer felt pain as I felt my life force drain out of me. I closed my eyes to the overwhelming darkness. Now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, pray the Lord my soul to take. Hush, little baby, don't say a word, and never mind that noise you heard. It's just the beasts under your bed, in your closet, in your head. The End